Hello everyone. Hi Instagram. Hi YouTube. And thank you so much for being here. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Nadej Sezana and I'm the Cravings Coach and I go by Nan. So you can call me Nan if, you, if you'd like. And what I love to do is helping you conquer your food cravings for good. And by that, I mean, uh, you can get the amazing body bliss that you want, the vibrant health that you've been looking for. You can zip up your jeans. You can get off the floor easily if that's something that you want, because you can indeed conquer your food cravings for good. And that's what I do with my clients all day, every day. And I love doing that. So thank you so much again for attending this live. And remember, if you like it, if you comment it, if you share it, each time you do so, well, first of all, I'm thrilled. Thank you. I'm very grateful. But also your name is entered in drawing next week, right? So the prize is going to be uh, two days of coaching with me via the Instagram DMs, right? So it means that 48 hour, for 48 hours, I'm going to guide you so that you can decide and become more um, free around food, more in control around food and you get to be who you want to be, somebody who's a normal eater, who doesn't say yes each time they see food, uh, as if on autopilot, but instead somebody who maybe savors their food because they do want it, but also they're delighted by their reflection in the dressing room, they're delighted by their energy level, they're delighted with the level of trust they have in themselves, and they also know how to optimize pleasure, whether it's food pleasure, but also all the other kinds of pleasure. So if that's something that you want, please share, like, comment this live and tag me each time you do so, so that then you'll be entered in the draw. So thank you so much again. And so nice the time to do for, you can see it, here's the glass, for the draw today. So da, 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 get the, there it is. Right, so today's name, the person who has won two days of coaching via Instagram DMs is Gunina. Gunina, and I'm going to reach out to you. Congratulations. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, so I'll send you a DM. You don't have to do anything. And then we'll decide on the most convenient two days in a row for you. And we'll have so much fun conquering your food cravings for good if that's an issue for you or conquering other cravings for good. Because, hmm, cravings. They can, they can come in all sorts of shapes and forms. And I love tackling them. So let's go back to our life today. How do I help my clients actually conquer their food cravings for good and get the healthier body, the smaller genes that they want? Well, basically three simple steps. First one is understand. We need to understand why you want the food. And it's just like, the, it's very basic. We can't change what we don't see. So if we don't know why you want the food, we may try to do to take different measures to we may try different tools different strategies but nothing is going to stick because we're not sure <laughs> but instead if we do know where the problem starts from right stems from then of course we can provide the adequate solution right so we want to be smart we don't want to be just lucky you know trying random things no we want to be smart about it we want to find a system that does work so first of all we need to understand why we want the food so that then the second step is that we decrease the longing for the food and there are different ways to do so so today i'm going to share with you one way just like last week i shared another way and next week i'll share another tool so that you get one week one whole week to experiment to play with that new tool and um, you can also find the previous uh, lives that I did on Instagram, but you can also find them on YouTube on my channel, Nadej Sezana Coaching. Send me a DM if you want the link. And you can also find all those tools, everything that I talk about there as resources for you to try. And of course, if you need help, don't forget, you can DM me simply via Instagram or uh, send me an email at nscoachingoutlook.fr. Right. So... You're going to have a new tool today. I'm going to share it with you. We're going to really uh, make it super simple so that you can apply it easily. And then you can turn the knowledge into know-how by trying it on for yourself this week so that you can apply and see your progress. You can share it with me if you want to. So once we've nailed that practice, it's step number three. It's easy to decline the food. That's step number three, but it's the fastest of them all, really, because all you need to do is just say, no, thank you. And that's it, right? No drama in your hair. It's just, no, 
you decline the food, just like you would decline an invitation, it's no big deal. And then you get to enjoy the super fun part, which is the smaller, the cuter clothes, climbing the stairs without being short of breath, posting, posing, posing for pictures, and then posting the, the pictures, sharing them with delight, instead of volunteering to be the photographer, right, and to be out of sight, right. So understanding the longing for the food, decreasing the longing for the food, and step three is declining the food easily, right. But today, let's go back to step number two. So with step number one, we understand why we want the food. And basically, it's because of some form of desire, whether it's fleeting, just like, mm, a little bit of desire or intense ma magnetic desire. You can't resist the food. And whether you call it a craving, a longing, an urge, an impulse, a compulsion, it doesn't matter, all right? Very often we understand that this desire is coming from something in your brain. Now, with step number two, we want to decrease the longing for the food so that it's so easy to go to step number three, decreasing the food, um, sorry, declining the food. And again, it's important to switch the light on to know what's going on in your brain so that then you can do something about it and you know when we see what's going on in a in a in an in a room because you switch the light on then you can rearrange the furniture much harder to do when the light the light is off right so today i'm sharing another powerful tool with you so that you can practice for one week as i said and I'm going to invite you to focus on this feeling of desire whether you call it craving compulsion urge it doesn't matter but whenever you think about the food, you uh, feel an emotion, and that's what we're going to focus on today. But why? Why do we want to focus on the emotion today? For three reasons. So the first one is because it's simply a way to acknowledge, notice, accept the emotion. Whenever we have a feeling, and today we're talking about desire, but we could be talking about any other kind of feeling. Whenever we have a feeling, it simply wants to be seen. It simply wants to be heard, accepted. So staying with this feeling for a while will actually make it easy for it to go somewhere else, to dissolve, to disappear, right? And it's actually pretty fast, up to 90 seconds. Sometimes it's even faster. Isn't it amazing? So that's the first thing. We want to feel the feeling so that it's seen, heard, understood, accepted, and then it moves on. The second part, the second reason why we want to sit with the feeling, the desire, is because well, as we're actually focusing on the desire, uh, accepting it, feeling it, processing it, we're not responding to it, which means we're not eating extra food. We're not consuming extra calories that are going to turn into extra weight on our body. And of course, we're not going to suffer from all the repercussions, all right? The stiffness in the body, maybe the lower energy, the judgment about ourselves, the self-criticism, the tight t-shirts, the tight clothes, and the potential judgments from other people, etc. So it's really a beneficial, beneficial for us if we sit with the, the emotion instead of reacting to it and eating. That's reason number two. Reason number three is also amazing because if we're able to sit and to stay with this emotion of desire, it means that then we'll be able to sit with other emotions maybe actually the ones we want to avoid. And that's the, the, these reasons are why we turn to the food instead. And it could be stress, boredom, anger, insecurity, frustration, disappointment, or even joy sometimes, right? When we feel joy, we're not used to feeling joy. It feels uncomfortable. We don't like discomfort. Let's eat food, not to feel, right? That's sometimes what we do. Curious, maybe that's something that you do too. But as we're emotional human beings, this skill of processing, sitting with the emotion of desire, uh, staying with it, is going to be extremely useful in all sorts of areas in your life. Whether you're nervous about coaching your clients, a particular client perhaps, or whenever you feel disappointed because a console call didn't go the way you wanted to, all those emotions, the nervousness, the disappointment, those are going to be you're go also going to be able to process them, to sit with them, to stay with them for a little while so that they dissolve and you move on to something else naturally, without forcing yourself, without numbing yourself with extra food. But now the question is, how do you actually stay in, with this emotion of desire for food? How do you process this emotion? What does it mean to process it? And really one of my core values is simplicity. So I always make sure that w whatever I teach, whichever tool I teach is super easy to grasp and remember. 
because I know that for myself, if I don't think it's super simple, super easy, then I won't do it. And that's not useful at all if we have a tool that we don't use. So this tool that I'm going to teach you today has only two simple steps. The first one is observe. And the second one is respire, respirer, as we say in French, breathe, basically. So I'm going to explain what I mean for each of those two steps. Remember, observe, breathe. So the, let's focus on the first one right now. Observe. All right. So to sit with an emotion means to observe and breathe. Observe. So it really means focusing on what's happening in our body. Right. So today we're not focusing on what's happening in our mind. We know we've seen that, that when we focus on when we think a thought of desire, like, ooh, this looks so yummy, we create that desire in our body. So last week we talked about what's happening in our head and how we could decrease uh, the desire by focusing on what's happening in our head, what we're telling ourselves about the food. Today, we're not focusing on our brain, but we're focusing on the impact of what we've got in our brain on our body. So let's, for some people, it's easier to do that when we close our eyes. So I'm inviting you to close your eyes if that's something that you want to do whenever you have an emotion, like a desire for food. That may be easier for you so that you know, you connect more with yourself, you focus only on yourself and not on your surroundings. And I've also made this uh, observation piece super simple, super easy, so that your brain doesn't come up with too many excuses not to do it. There are only two questions to focus on to get to know what this desire is like in your body. The first question is where, the second question is what. So let's start with the first one, which is where. And when I ask where, where is this emotion of desire in your body? I want you to scan your body from head to toe, bit by bit, body part by body part, to find where you can actually feel this desire. Is it in your face, mouth, jaw, or is it in your stomach, or is it in your chest? Is it in the um, in the, your um, the tip of your your fingers? Where is it? And really, there's no right or wrong answer here. You get to feel what you're feeling, and nobody knows better than you do what you're feeling. So. That's it. Also, there might not just be one part of your body where you're feeling this desire for the food. And it's okay. But it's that. So let's focus. Let's make it again super easy, super simple for us to grasp and just focus on one part of your body. Maybe the part where the desire you feel is the most intense. And again, to make it easy for you to observe, right? To do this, to use this tool. Otherwise, what's the point? Right? So to give you an example, when I had intense urges to binge eat that was super intense, I would feel them in my chest, right? In my, in my, um, around my heart area. Nowadays, it has decreased tremendously. So whenever I have an urge to eat, it's a tiny, tiny little urge that I call a craving. And it's rather a craving to snack now. And it's mostly in my mouth, right? So first question, when you observe the emotion in your body is, where? Where is it happening? Second question to remember when you observe the emotion of desire in your body is to ask what? And by that, I mean what's happening in that part of your body, whether it's in your mouth or in your chest, if I take my example, right? But what I like to do is to pretend that the emotion is just like an object that's sit there, um, a sculpture maybe, and I want to describe it to my best friend on the phone. So they can't see what I'm experiencing at all, I need to tell them what it's like. And then I'm going to use different ways to express, just like I would if I were to see a real object in front of me. And by that, I mean, I'm going to focus on the size and I'm going to use comparison so that my best friend understands on the other side of the phone. Is it as small uh, as a coin? Is it as small as my fist? Is it as small or as big as my chest? Or is it bigger than my body? So I'm going to focus on the size. The second thing I could focus on could be the shape. Is it like a cube? Is it, is it flat? Is it pointy? What's it like, right? Think about all those amazing adjectives that you learned as you were in kindergarten. It's still useful, it's still relevant. So you have the vocabulary, it's just a need to actually use it to describe the emotion you're going through, you're experiencing. It could also be the texture, okay? Is it smooth? Is it soft? Is it, um, is it rough? What is it like? You can also think about the weight. Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it as light as a feather? Is it as heavy as, I don't know, 10, 10 pound weight, right? 
what about the temperature? Is it cold? Is it hot? Is it boiling hot? What's it like? What about the color? And here you can use the whole palette of the colors. Is it gray? Is it black? Is it dark? Is it glossy? Is it shiny? Think about all that, right? What about the speed? If it's moving, is it moving fast? Is it moving slow? Is it moving, you know, ups and downs? So it stops and then it starts again. Uh, maybe it's not moving at all, right? It's also good to know. Think about the sound. Is there a sound coming from it? And if so, what kind of sound is it? Is it a pleasant noise, like a melody, a tune, or is it noise, right? What about the smell? Is there a smell coming from it? Is it a smell that you'd rather not smell? Or is it like a perfume or something really nice, really pleasant? What about the taste? Maybe you can actually feel a, a flavor coming from that emotion in your body. What is it? Again, try to describe as much as you can with whatever words that are coming up for you, right? And to give you another example, when I used to be, uh, to have this urge, this intense urge to binge eat in my chest, I really had the impression that I had a heavy magnet in this chest. It was full of energy, it was dense, it was dark, it was slowly vibrating and pulling me towards the kitchen, the cookie jar wearer, right? Today, when I have cravings to have an extra piece of chocolate, for instance, I can feel my mouth full of water, full of saliva, basically, and it's light, it's fluid, it's cool, I see it blue, and it's slow, it's like a gentle wave, right? So it has nothing to do with what I used to feel. And I really encourage you to take the time to do that exercise, maybe do it on purpose, because that's how you get more familiar with what you're going to experience without you wanting to. So start practicing deliberately if that's something that you want. Maybe set, give yourself the time in front of a, a cracker or a cookie, a slice of pizza, whatever you fancy, but do it on purpose. So that then, once you've done this drill once, twice, 100 times, you don't feel as afraid maybe, or as uncomfortable when, whenever a, another urge or craving strikes, right? You're prepared. That's what we want. So that was the first step. Remember, observe, right? And observe has two parts to it, which is first, where is it? Where is this emotion in your body? And the second one is what's happening there? The second part that I used to forget completely, but that is so crucial. The second part is to actually breathe, or as I like to say it, kind of French, respire, right? Respirer. So don't forget to breathe. This is really what I learned through experience because, well, it may sound obvious, okay, we're always breathing, right? And yet the way we breathe makes a difference. When it's automatic without us thinking about it deliberately or whether it is deliberate when we're taking deep cleansing breath, it makes all the difference, right? Maybe you've noticed it already for yourself that when you take the time to breathe deep, then you slow your whole system down, it feels so much better. So it's definitely going to affect also the emotion of desire that you feel. Because our emotions, whatever they are, however unpleasant they may be, they are going to dissolve much faster actually than if we don't take the time to breathe deep, all right? And you can find plenty of different ways to breathe that are going to be so useful to you. You can find them on the internet, you can find in yoga classes, and we, we, we are not short of ways to breathe. Of course, what we want is for you to find a way that you can breathe and dissolve the emotion even better, the one that suits you. I'm going to share with you my way, my way of breathing. When I uh, first experienced it, it was mind-blowing the difference that I experienced, the amount, the decrease in the desire that I felt immediately. Right, that was really huge for me. So of course, uh, I want the same for you and that's why I'm sharing this with you. So it goes like this. There are three steps to it. First, breathe in for four. So you count up to four as you breathe in, you breathe in the oxygen. Then you hold your breath for the count of two, right? And then you release the breath, you breathe out on counting up to six, right? And then you repeat the exact same pattern five times in a row, right? What I really like about it, on top of the fact that it really calms me down, is that because I'm thinking, I'm counting, I'm not focusing so much on the, on the food. 
or the desire or whatever else could be on my mind. My brain is focused on something super simple, super easy for me to do, which is counting, which I know exactly what to do about. So it's another way to distract myself, but super easily because you can do that wherever you are. Super easy, right? Just like this whole process, by the way, the observing and breathing, you can do that wherever you are, right? So of course, this breathing technique is just one of my many tools. And I'm really inviting you to try it on for size for yourself. And please, if you want to share, do reach out to me in the DM on Instagram or at uh, nscoachingoutlook.fr if you want to send me an email. I'm really happy to help if you have a question or a comment, right? And of course, if you want to take this work deeper, if you want to benefit from all the my experience and my expertise as a, a cravings coach who has overcome binge eating, I can help you. I can help you get the body you want and the health that you want. I can help you build that life, that amazing life that you want. This is what I love doing all day, every day. And that's what I've been doing. I've been tremendously lucky and privileged. This is what I've been doing for the past four years, a bit more than four years now. And I've helped up to 50 clients per week reach their goals since June 2019. I'm really blessed for that. So I've got absolutely no doubt with that with all the, 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 the amazing people I've helped, of course, I can help you, right? If that's something that you want, of course, you can be helped. You are no exception. You are not a unicorn. But all you need to do is actually give yourself permission to have what you want, right? And it starts simply by booking your free craft control consultation with me. It's one hour long. It's free. And together, we're going to fo focus on what you want for you, right? This is really important. What do you want for yourself? Who do you want to be? Who would you like to become as you conquer your food cravings for good? And how can you give it to yourself? Maybe there is just not one way. Maybe there are several options. Let's explore them, right? Let's expose them. Let's explore them. And then how can I help, I, sorry, help you achieve this? This is what you want. Do you want to work with me? Do you want me to help you make a decision? I can do that, no problem at all, right? Your very first step towards this future version of you, the version of you who gives herself permission to have what she wants or what they want, is simply, again, to book your free craft control consultation call with me. So you can do that different ways. You can go to my Instagram bio at nan.cezana.coaching, or you can send me an, e an email at nscoaching at outlook.fr or if you're on YouTube there will be the link below this video so that you can simply go to my Calendly and schedule your call right this is this is all you need to do and you can do this of course you can have what you want which is amazing and I know exactly what to do to help you so I want to finish by thanking you so much for attending this live again if you want to like it if you want to comment on it if you want to share it feel free to do so. And remember that each time you do that, then your name gets entered in a draw for next week. And the prize, as I, as I said earlier, is that for two days, I'm going to coach you on your cravings, whether they're related to food, to drink, to biting your nails, to scrolling your phones, to gossiping, whatever is on your mind and bothering you, a bad, ha bad habit that you wish you didn't have, I'm going to help you unravel this and change this for the better for yourself, right? So that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Tell me more if you plan to use this tool and tell me if you want to share with me, I'd be delighted to hear from you. In the meantime, I'm going to wish you a very beautiful rest of your day. Take care. Thank you so much again. Bye.